Welcome to Rich Lieberman. Um, I get a lot, a lot of emails <clears throat> and comments. This is a weird one because uh, I kind of put it off, put it aside, didn't really talk about it. And because of the fact that I actually listen religiously, not because I'm proud of it, not because I want to, but I I do listen <clears throat> a lot to KNBR, Sports Talk, because, um, A, I like sports for the most part, and news and, you know, cultural things, political events. I've, you know, been glued to the CNNs and the Fox News and MSNBCs over the uh, Iowa caucuses and all that. But anyway, so I get a lot of people sending me texts and comments and uh, emails over this thing. And that is <clears throat> Greg Papa, who I've been very critical of, very, very, very critical of um, over his touchdown call. I don't want to get into that now. He also does the play-by-play -play for the San Francisco 49ers. This is not about that. Papa also does a sports talk show on KNBR, which is the San Francisco AM FM uh, sports talk station. And they really don't talk about sports. They try to be hip and talk about other things, but I'm not going to get into that for now. Um, but this is this broadcast is going to be about Greg Papa's unique in a bizarre way and sort of weird um, mention of OJ, OJ Simpson. And he mentions him all the time, refers to him all the time. And it's not in the context of what we all know OJ committed a double homicide back in 1994. I mean, he was acquitted. So technically he's he's innocent, but everybody with a quarter brain knows what happened. Okay. You know, it brings up the old joke. I don't want to say OJ was guilty, but the only thing they didn't find at the crime scene was a football. So anyway, uh Papa, and I, I heard it today, and he was talking about the snow situation in Buffalo, which caused the cancellation of the original time of the game, uh, which was supposed to be played on Saturday, and they obviously moved it to Monday. It was still cold. It didn't snow for the most part, but it was cold in, in any event. So Papa today comes back on the air, and this is the day after Martin Luther King Day, and he talked about his weekend and the fact that he must have mentioned it 20 times about him skiing and, you know, going places and so forth. Um, and, and he was talking about Buffalo, the city of Buffalo and the area where the, they play the bills. And, and he, he was critical of the fact that they moved the game from Saturday till Monday. And then he, he was talking about the city of Buffalo and where the stadium is. And, and he grew up in Buffalo. And he, he brings up O.J. again. He goes, come on, we had O.J. He played in it. That This was a great... I didn't hear the whole context, but I actually did hear him mention again O.J. Simpson. And he mentions him all the time. And again, it's not, it's not in, the, in the context of football. He mentions him in the context of everything else. And I'm not saying he's being sacrilegious, but it's strange. It's odd that, that he would bring him up all this time. And again, I get a lot of, of, of uh, you know, emails, comments from you folks out there about his odd, bizarre, weird mention of Oche. I don't get it. 
it, it adds to Greg Papa's overall weirdness and his nervous. I can only say he's nervous, and I'm not talking about that part, the nervous part with regards to mentioning OJ all the time. Uh, he has this weird giggle. And when he, he's making a, a point about anything, he goes off onto these tangents and, and has an inexplicable giggle. And he goes from a regular tone of voice into a kind of a, 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 a gargle, a giggle, uh, some weird speak. But that, again, I don't want to get off on that. But the bizarre, almost ludicrous mention of OJ. Look, he can mention OJ a thousand times a minute. In that respect, I don't care. But but the fact that he mentions OJ all the time for no apparent reason is, is really odd. That's a perfect illustration. Odd. Who mentions OJ anymore? And again, I, I don't, you know, it's been what now? Uh, uh, 24 almost, uh, it's, it's going to be the 30 year anniversary, you know, that, that OJ, the whole Nicole Brown and her friend, and he killed two people, chopped the heads off of two people. One, his ex-wife, the other, her friend. And it brings back the whole, remember those days with uh, the trial and then obviously before the trial on, you know, the five days after the murders, the Bronco chase and all that. And wait till we get close to the 30 year anniversary of that. We're going to start hearing, oh, my God, it, it created a cottage industry of pundits and criminal talkers and uh, lawyers appearing on television. And we turned you know, inane judges into um, celebrities. It, again, it created a whole bunch of people. You know, it it, it uh, illustrated Johnny Cochran, the late great, I don't know if he was great for us, but he was great for OJ, Johnny Cochran, and and, and all of that. The trial, the, the, the civil trial, you know, he was guilty of the criminal, or not guilty, mm -hmm. they wish he was. The... Uh, the not guilty at the, uh, excuse me, folks, here when I get rid of these things because I can't stand them. Anyway, uh, but, yeah, Marsha Clark and uh, Christopher Darden, who worked on the defense team. Again, sorry about that. He was on the prosecution team. And F. Lee Bailey, and, uh, you know, remember his, back and forth with Mark uh, Furman. So anyway, I don't want to rehash the whole OJ trial. Everybody with a half a brain. You know, you don't have to be, and I'm not racist, and I could give a damn. I grew up in Oakland, you know, so I'm not one of those. OJ got acquitted basically because you had a jury that was pretty much pissed off at the LAPD and all that. So, you know, which aided and abetted, you know, the the not guilty uh, jury finding. But but again, Papa doesn't mention OJ once in a while. He mentions him all the time. And like, what are you bringing him up for? And he, and he and then he brings him up because he played for the 49ers. And that was like a cup of coffee that was back, you know, God. 43 years ago, 79, or whenever it was, more than that. And I don't know why. And I, I, you know, and I'm not going to play psychologist here. But as I just said, it's odd that he would bring up OJ. It's always OJ. And I, you know, draw your own conclusion. You'll be an armchair psychologist. And you tell me, if you'd like, why would anybody bring up OJ all the time? And I, I can't think of it. And I've heard him do it on his talk show religiously, as if he 
had to get a quota done. You have to mention OJ all the time. And if you go back today, and I know KNBR, um, they record, or at least they did, um, all their shows. So you can you can tune in and listen to the playback. And he's mentioning OJ again. And again, it, out of nowhere, talking about the Buffalo game being moved, you know, to Monday. And they played the game, and it wasn't that snowy. And then he goes into OJ. And he twi- mentioned him twice. So it's it's bizarre. It's odd. And uh, I don't know what else I can say about it. But I will say, later on today, I'm going to talk about KNBR, again, butting heads with the Giants. And it's become a rather juicy situation the giants are not happy about the fact that they're not getting mentioned along with the rest of major league baseball and that the nfl has never been more of a king than it is right now but that has nothing to do with the giants being pissed off at knbr they're both stuck with each other so i'll see you later and tell all your friends about me rich lieberman And remember to contribute to the cause if you like watching me and reading me. Thanks. See you later.